in the world of Spielsachen, um, the so-called future squared integration stage has just been completed. And for the future, there's already plans for the future cubed, which relates to the monster base in the center, and also for the geometrical integration for the setup as a whole. And during the time when this setup was developed, a few components have appeared, vanished, maybe reappeared, and I'd like to look through all of them today. So without further ado, let's start. There's the Beringer SF300 Superfuzz, um, an octave fuzz that also offers boost, um, so a total of three modes. Pretty decent distortion pedal, was re recommended by JHS pedal to me. One thing I'd like to say, um, I'll put them into three heaps. One is, will definitely make a return, may make a return, maybe not in the core Spielsachen setup. And the third one is, I don't really need that anymore. So that is a distortion pedal. Well, I'll put it square in the center. Speaking of distortion pedals, the TC Electronic Dark Matter, that was the first one that had joined the setup. It's pretty good on bass synthesizers, uh, for which I have now the uh, Sans Amp. And for that reason, yeah, I guess it will stay about in the same region. SQ1, Step Sequencer by Boss. 16 steps or two times eight. Um, has a lot of wonderful features, great component. You just hook it up to a USB port or run it on battery and connect it somewhere. This will definitely make a return, although maybe not a permanent one. So let's look into a box with modules. That is the Snazzy FX um, Kitty Eyes. It is a non-linear function generator, which also has some CV controls. Let's have it up here. It's, it's one of those modulation sources. Well, I didn't really get the hang of it, so, so I put it somewhere here may reuse it again, but maybe not that often. And also only in very specific setups. Erika Pico CV Mixer. Um, three horizontal partitions, um, three to one CV or audio mixer. Right now I'm mostly using the 2HP modular mix, which has four inputs on 2 HP, so it's more of a, I'm gonna use it when I run out of uh, channels in a given situation. The A101 standard VCO by Döpfer, one of the, yeah, really historical modules and incidentally the only standalone saw-based VCO I have in my setup. All the other ones are either triangle based or even sign based. Um, so maybe I'll get um, another saw based VCO which is more compact, but for the time being, will make a return if I need a saw based VCO in addition to the one which is in the Nanotzwerk Pro. Mutable Instruments Ears. It's a contact microphone, also generates a gate and an envelope signal out of that. It's pretty neat to just have something to tap onto to generate gate and CV signals out of it just for trying things out. Right now it doesn't, it didn't find a place in my setup, but will definitely make return, maybe even a permanent one. The third of my sign VCOs um, 
I already have two of them in my setup. If I need a third one, I'll install it. The Arturia Mini Brood. Yeah, it's a Mini Brood. I'm definitely gonna use it again, but most probably not inside of the main Spielsachen setup. The uh, reason for that is quite simple. For monophonic synth parts, I use the modular system and for the keyboard synth that I have in that system, I uh, want a poly synth. That me, uh, or rather, I'd like an analog poly synth which allows for the, some knob twiddling. But that being said, will most probably not make a return. May be part of the compact creations, but you've seen this thing a lot for a long time. Dreadbox Steel VCA, 8 uh, HP, 2 VCAs, a little bit noisy. It's safe to say that it's the worst VCA I have, so won't make a return. Second SQ1, same as before. You can't have too many of those. MFP Drum 99, um, a 5 to 2 mixer with a um, lead through in stereo so you can chain them or with a similar mixer for example a 138S by um, Döpfer. Um, the downside here is really those small uh, knobs for stereo position. You can't see them even in a valid studio, let alone in a performance situation. So that is really why I put it somewhere in between here. So yeah, no, maybe not. So it's to the side. So that is a fun one. A143-4 quad VCO uh, VCLFO um, gives you four oscillators with um, simultaneous triangle and square waveforms. Um, also mixed together in this thing. Sadly, it doesn't have a proper stability with regard to frequency. So if you use it as a VCO especially, be sure to retune uh, from time to time. Um, it's also not the smallest component, so this is really something I'll build in if I just need four additional voices where pitch is not that important, maybe for a drone, but, but still kind of a valuable thing. A133. Uh, Döpfer Polarizer. Um, this is two four quadrant multipliers, meaning you can use it as a VCA, as a ring modulator, and a lot of other things as well. It's the only component I have right now with those features, which also has an analog signal path, so it will definitely make a return. I like multiplying things. Clark Walker Kick. It does bass drums and bass toms, nothing else, but it does them very, very well. Um, right now I'm not also a component that had seen a lot of screen time very early on. It will definitely make a return, though maybe not in the main setup. That is simply because I can get a similar kind of thing with modular components, but it will make a return. Slightly different statement here for the Walker Beat. It has that kind of slightly low fidelity but still oomphy uh, analog sound. And I think you last saw it in the compelling challenge. And for similar situations, when I need two independent drum machines in them as Spielsachen setup or for something else, I'll need it again. Even a stereo chorus and by chorus. This one belongs to Jan Kühner, the other one is mine. Um, yeah, um, right now I have replaced it with a Behringer analog chorus paddle. In other 
setups and when I need more than one steer, uh, chorus pedal will definitely be used again. Töpfer A1324 Quad Exponential VCA. It's, as the name says, four VCAs in a 8 HP housing and also a summing bus and normal inputs uh, for, for CV signa signals. So relatively practical. There's two downsides really. One of them is it due to it being exponential, it has a tendency to overload if you don't tame the input levels and there is no knob on it for taming the input levels. Was one of my first VCAs. I actually have another one of them, but most probably won't see any action again. Döpfer A115 audio divider gives you original turned into square wave, which is also an additional feature, um, and then um, divided by 2, 4 and 8 and 16 for some very low things. You might always need that again, although in part I can do it with the fold, but maybe I need two of those at the same time. Another one of the VCAs we discussed before, LEP Piatino is a kind of a hi-hat module that sucks. Don't buy it. A140 ADSR envelope generator. This one, yeah, it really only has one downside and that is that it's uh, 8 HP for one envelope and that is a lot. So most probably I'm not going to reuse it for reason that you're about to see in a moment. Expert Sleepers ES3. Now that is an interface from ADAT audio to uh, CV. And for that is perfect for integrating your modular system with a computer. So it won't for that reason be part of Spielsachen, but will definitely be used again. A192, simple MIDI interface on 6 HP, will definitely find its uses, maybe in, in other setups. Maybe not in the main setup. Döpfer A138U, it's a double 3 to 1 Unity mixer, hence the U, I assume. Um, right now I have mostly one situation where I use the IntelliGel Unity Mixer, which is half the size, so definitely wins. And for more constant applications, I'll definitely get another one of those IntelliGels. But for the time being and for quick setups where I just need to sum a few things, maybe precisely sum them, it will definitely make a return. Speaking of situations where I need to sum a few things, for the last component I see here, we have the Döpfer A143-2 Quad ADSR. You, in the beginning, this, this was really my component for um, having a lot of affordable ADSRs. Um, right now, my ADSRs are, yeah, what are, am I using? I use those voltage controlled um, uh, Döpfer Twin ADSRs, which are more compact than this and slightly more flexible. However, this one has those features. You can change them in a lot of ways, like I recently demonstrated. And for that reason, it will definitely make a return. Yeah, here's still the case. Still have that for R&D situations. I'll use it again. So, in summary, first of all, um, let's say on the somewhat negative side, we, we have a few components that will most probably not have any use again. Among them, the two ADSRs, uh, the two VCAs, 
the Piatino, etc. Uh, only the Piatino from those is really crap. Um, on the left side here we see there's a lot of things that why you don't see them on screen regularly right now. They will definitely make a return. And finally the middle section. Let's not forget I'm not only doing that strange Spielsachen stuff but also normal stuff. Yeah, well, not exactly normal. Um, so all of those will maybe not be seen again, but definitely be heard again in my music. And with that, have a nice weekend. Bye. And yeah, and look forward to the next Spielsachen thingy.